السلام عليكم سيدي وعليكم السلام ورحمه الله could you could you please elaborate on the deeper realities and understanding of baharul muhit baharul qudra and baharul hayat what comes up with these shit <laughs> this is not what we're talking about inshallah mm. try to keep on what we've talked about in the recent thing not try to challenge us Uh, As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As salaam wa rahmatullah In your previous talks you mentioned reading Qur'an with meditation while connecting your heart with Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. Can you please elaborate a little bit more? <coughs> yeah that anytime we, we meditate people are having a difficult time in the understanding of meditation and tafakkur and contemplation. So the greatest meditation is, is, a, is an act of love. So that's when we describe, well, what, what, what did Prophet struggle and strive? He strived and, and suffered to bring the Holy Qur'an for us. So anyone who reads Qur'an with this love and this ishq and this understanding, of course they're connecting with Prophet They should meditate, see themselves connecting with the shaykh and asking to be at Rosa Sharif in the presence of Prophet and as a result then reading Qur'an with that connection so that Prophet dress them and illuminate their lights and illuminate their, their love, inshaAllah. And that's all Bahr al-Muhit, the all-encompassing ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah That's everything, that the all-encompassing ocean is the reality of the meme, right? Between Ahad and Nabi Ahmad is a meme. And between these two realities is the reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah So the all-encompassing ocean is that everything is in a meme. We are inside of Muhammadun Rasulullah So that's the kalima. La ilaha illallah is a clarification for you and me that you're not with Allah. So that's one way of Allah saying it to us, be humble, you're not with me. And that La ilaha illallah is the power of Muhammadun Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So then everything comes from one light and this is tawheed. So people say, oh Shaykh we don't ever talk about usul, this is the highest usul you can hope to ever know. Because the first usul is what? La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah What they understood of this kalimah? Just that they say it in their salah? No. But the haqqaiq of the kalimah and the haqqaiq of that reality is that you'll never be with Allah and all that exists is Muhammadun Rasulullah and that Allah is the power of that ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah And inside that Muhammadun Rasulullah is the entire ocean of power, right? Because Allah is the power that sends into that. So how could you get your power from Allah? When Allah says, if I talk to the Qur'an, if I send my Qur'an to the mountain the mountain will be qashiya, but I send it to Muhammadun Rasulullah and it stands firm. 
So then everybody who has no understanding and no manners, they say, no, no, we take our power directly from Allah. What's more powerful? What do you call power from Allah or Holy Qur'an? The Qur'an of well Qur'an in Majeed is the power that Allah is describing and Allah clarifies in Ayat al kareem that you can't take my Qur'an, you cannot take the power of my Qur'an, nothing can take the power of my Qur'an. If I speak to a mountain it will be dust. What do people think they're stronger than Mount Everest? Not silly humans that have no understanding. They say, no we take only our power from Allah. Allah is saying that the mountain can take my power, how you can take your power from Allah But He defines for us that, no, my speech comes to the heart of Muhammadun Rasulullah and firm, means no movement. As a result, where is la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah aliyul azeem? Where is that? That there is no help and no power except in this reality. So means that Allah's power moves into the ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah and then out to creation. No one can take above the power of Sayyidina Muhammad And that's why Allah defines for us, hold tight to that rope. If you're not holding that rope and that power, no power reaching to you from the real powers of Allah You reach the barakah of everything just sort of showering everywhere. But the real power and real authority is in the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad and that's why we said everyone in Islam has to take their bayat, inna ladina yubayyunaka yubayyoon Allah yadullahi fawqa idhim. Allah's hand is upon that hand. And those whom hand is not with Allah's hand has no hand that can help him, no hand that reaches to him, no hand of any benefit to them. Means the only hand that they can reach is to the hand of Muhammadun Rasulullah and Allah clarifies, my hand is there. That's how shaitan is fooling people. Oh we take our power only from Allah. Allah clarifies for you the Qur'an is the power of all power. That if there's a power that can revive the dead is Holy Qur'an. There's no more power, more powerful than that and Allah says, you can't carry that, the mountain can't carry that. So means in these days shaitan's trick is what? To take out the importance of Prophet from our lives and make foolish people think that they can reach to the Divine and they can't even reach to themselves. As a result what? They're then just struggling and being afflicted by satanic uh, difficulties. And only Allah's realities and purpose is to bring back everybody to the reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah Come back to your Prophet, come back to the one whom, who loves you more than you love yourself, the one whom is responsible for you in Divinely Presence to bring you back pure and purified to Allah's Divine Presence inshaAllah. <clears throat> As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa There's like three, four or five questions related to the same question. Uh, they're <coughs> saying, how do we know that our head is truly turned off? Does it relate just to spiritual practices or to do more parts of our lives? All related to how to turn the head off. Yeah, if you ask that question your head is not off <laughs> and buy two books from the timeless reality, one for yourself, one for others. This process is not an easy process, means turning of one's head off is the shutting of their dunya and their, their understanding of dunya and every discussion and every understanding and every contemplation is to put the actions of the heart and faith of the heart. So it's never truly finished, it's a continuous battle. That people think that because they have a head then they begin to quote that Allah gave us a aqal. So we have an intellect and these are intellectual Muslims that appear with the ties and no, no sunnah covering on their head and barely have even a beard. 
and they come out in ties and karavat and crosses on their neck and come and talk to you in suits and say, Allah gave us a aqal so we must use our head. And it's not true because aqal means something different than what they understood. Allah gave us an ayn, an ancient knowledge. Allah gave us a qaf of Qur'an al-Majeed and a lamb of lisan al-haqq. This is a conveyance of eternal Divine knowledge in aqal. Note the fact that you use your head. Allah gave us a head and gave us a heart and said, here you go, you're on earth, good luck. And those whom use their head, they lend themselves to shaitan. And those whom nourish their heart and deactivated their head, deactivated their head. That's what we described Imam Ali salam. he has a sword with a headhunter which has the lam alif on it to come to teach us, I'm the one, one of my responsibilities is the guarding of the gate. If you're coming into this gate of realities, this lam alif has to go on your head. Don't come here with your head, don't come here with your logic, don't come here with your reason which we described. You want, to, you want to use those ears that have heard nothing and, and compared with us and you want to use the eyes have seen nothing and keep arguing with us, it's impossible to do that, shut that off. So then they trained on how to shut the head off. If they shut that reality off, Allah opened the real reality, the true power, the true magnificence which resides within the heart of the believer. And then later Allah will activate and make the head to truly be a khalifa in which it will be crowned by Allah That when you don't show your head to Allah why you think our prayer, the apex of our prayer is in what position? The highest point of our salah, is it in your du'a, is it in your standing, is it in your ruku? Or all awliyaullah came and taught, it's in your sujood. That your highest point in your prayer is when your face hits the ground. It's most pleasing to Allah when you, when you take the arrogance and the oppression of your character and put your face to the ground and that your heart is at its highest point. Anyone who doesn't feel good, go into sujood. Anyone who's angry, go into sujood. Anyone who's sad, go into sujood. You are closest to Allah when your face is on the ground. And it's the most pleasing position of worshipness for Allah because you're showing that your oppression and the oppressive nature of your reality which is your head, not your heart, nobody oppresses by their heart. Heart is, 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 a, is a vehicle of love, if you have no love there's no oppression with your heart. People only oppress other people by their heads. So as soon as the oppressor goes into sujood is Allah is happy. And this is the, the, the greatest position from Allah So the one whom continuously brings themselves down brings their faculty of their head down, I don't know anything. They're even trained on how to talk so that never to give your ego a, a, a rise or a thought. Anywhere they go, I don't know. Anyone who says any to them, I have no idea. It's not for me to give anything from my head to to vindicate my head, to glorify my head, to increase the sickness of my head. But my job was to fight my head, that my, my head wants to give you every answer, every single debate I'm going to give you an answer from my head. And Allah training for this, this servant was what? Negate, La ilaha illallah, La. So when you truly have La on your head, anyone who asks you anything you say what? La. Nothing, I don't know anything. When they're able to negate themselves in nothing, 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 they may know everything. But it's of no value to say anything. Then when Allah put them in a position of authority, now your head is my khalifa. 
And when you sit for that position, I sit upon your heart and I activate your head, I activate your mouth, I activate your eyes, I activate your ears, now you speak on my behalf. This is completely different understanding. So then their life was then, don't give your ego any, any power. If you ever deal with a shaykh and he talks to you, say, alhamdulillah, don't ever vindicate yourself. Say, you did something wrong, say, no, of course you did. Or say, no I didn't, I was, oh, I didn't do that, don't, don't vindicate yourself because it's not your heart you're doing, you're actually giving power to your nafs to come back now through your head and use your mouth, your ears and your eyes against this shaykh. When they're teaching you, no shut it off, kill it, is La ilaha illallah, whatever he says you're right. You did this, even you didn't do it doesn't matter, you say you're right, alhamdulillah, naam, naam, cut your head off. When the servant can train like that then what happens? And Mawlana Shaykh would say, yes it's truly no mind person. Right? He was very happy with that. He didn't like big-minded people, he liked big-heart people, they were like birds. Big-hearted servants they fly in the zikr, they don't speak in it, they fly in the zikr because they shut their head off, they say, I have nothing to say that's going to benefit anyone and anything I say has to only benefit me. And as a result they took away of what's the first way of tariqah, sab of silence. You put the rock in your mouth, I have nothing to say of benefit to people and all that I say should only be benefiting me because my head is not yet a khalifa from Allah So my speech is only for myself, I shut it off, I have to work on myself and when anybody asks me a question I have nothing to benefit you, I'm still fighting against myself. As a result they shut that faculty off, Allah began to activate their heart like birds. Their heart was immense, the energy within their heart was immense and as a result they fly in the associations. Later Allah said, now activate your head, means you speak for me, you hear for me, you see for me, anywhere you go you make du'as for me, so much so that you have power of kun fayakun and you are Rabbaniyoon, you learn the book and you taught the book. This is what awliyaullah asked of us that achieve this. And the more you activate that head, the farther away you are from this target. So anyone has to ask is, is, how do I know if my head is off? You know, you know that when you don't talk and that you shut everything off and everybody else wins every debate and that the, the only one who, who has to win is Allah and you give up on any type of answer, any type of, of questioning and everything is based on your heart, your meditation and your tafakkur and you feel yourself flying in Divine the Presence, there's no need to ask anymore. If you can't fly then you didn't reach the station of even a bird. You have to be able to fly, you have to be ethereal in which you're so light in your soul that you're flying in the zikrs and the salawats and nasheeds and in the talks. The talks are a portal that begins to open. As soon as the shaykhs are talking then many spiritual beings are coming. This energy is then flowing and then people can reach to a hall and to an energy inshaAllah. But you'll know when you get there, you won't have any questions of are you there or not inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa Please forgive our bad adab, we are so weak that we don't know what to ask, keep our, your love for us. Walaykum as salaam, no problem. No, you don't know what he's forced to ask anything. But I know that some people have questions so we hope that they reach to us, especially the ones from Help Me and everything Yahish give them to, to Hajj Junaid so that we can ask them so we don't have to keep typing them a hundred times. So those we can confer and convey so that they, they are conveyed inshaAllah. And the questions coming through TikTok and, and uh, the questions coming through YouTube inshaAllah and alhamdulillah. TikTok is mostly Wahhabi stuff. Yeah, that's good for them to learn, no questions for them. <laughs> they're, they're in time out, you have to learn your, your deen and that was the beginning talk about the Qur'an, that the sickness and arrogance 
that they say, oh power comes from Allah Allah tell me what this ayatul kareem means from you Wahhabi people, email us at helpmenurmuhammad.com. When Allah is saying that the Qur'an cannot be revealed to anyone and if we send the Qur'an upon the mountain it would be dust. Is there something more powerful than Qur'an? And Allah says, it can't go to anyone. Allah didn't say, you can get the Qur'an and that Allah's speech will come to your heart. Allah is giving the ultimate power and saying that it cannot reach to anywhere. If I send my speech on the mountain it will be dust. You think Allah is going to speak to you directly? And that Allah's power reaches you directly? This the, the, the boastfulness of shaitan and arrogance? That we are in need of Muhammadun Rasulullah that's why Allah described, no I speak, comes to the heart of Prophet and firm which is not even understandable how anything Allah created can hold that which is not created. Allah's speech is not created, Qur'an is not created. It's a flowing eternal power that has been held together by Allah and to emanate from the soul of Prophet beyond understanding. When people think, no Allah will send me power directly. It's unfortunate that shaitan fools people but you know, you know when you're gonna see it is when that just start biting your feet and you, you, know, you see and who you cry out to and who's gonna help you. If it's not Muhammadun Rasulullah then your feet are going to be eaten. So these days of difficulty are coming, extreme difficulties are coming. It will become very clear, it won't be anymore just having to be talked about in, in sobats but people will understand, they'll be faced with their greatest fears and Allah at that time will say, did not a messenger come to you, did not a warning come to you, did not an, a guidance come to you? So then these are guidances coming from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad that, oh people come back to Muhammadun Rasulullah that Allah is describing He's the dhikr of Allah that this is the, the message and the messenger of Allah in who dhikrun wal Qur'an in Majeed, wal Qur'an in Mubeen. So this is an immense importance and that's why so much in the last days is important. That they're going to need this power, they're going to need that connection and shaitan fooling at each person to feel they're strong, they're, they're all-knowing, they're, they're powerful and this is an unfortunate state of humanity. <coughs> uh, another question a few people are asking, uh, As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi, Alaykum Salaam. please forgive my bad adam and ignorance. Kindly grant us more light on the statement, Allah's uncreated words reflecting in Prophet Muhammad I just said that okay. before you asked, okay. that, that that's the reality, that's somebody has to you know contemplate. That something not created is being sent through the soul of Prophet means the one who makes physics, makes the laws of physics is the only one holding that reality together is Allah The same one who brought into His Divinely Presence with no need of a ship, with no need of a, a space suit, with no need of anything through the seven heavens and Divinely Presence and brought Him right into His Divinely Presence. That one who can make the physicality of Prophet to travel throughout the entire heavens straight into His Divinely Presence with what speed and what power Allah held Prophet together to enter into that reality. So means that these are, these are immense powers, immense realities. This is not just a common person, this is not just a common reality that everybody can achieve. So then as a result Allah draws our attention to that, that these are this is a gifted soul, this is a mercy. And this is Allah's mercy to creation that you can draw near to this reality by connecting your heart, by showing your love. We even have the amazing ability to go to Medina to Munawara to be close to the physicality of Sayyidina Muhammad So this is an immense gift, immense gift for, for creation where all other nations they're looking for a cup from their Prophet. 
They said, oh if we had the chalice of Sayyidina Isa salam, we could conquer the world. They're looking for a cup that Sayyidina Isa drank from as a barakah for them. The whole of Prophet Wasallam's body is in Medina to Munawwara, get your ticket, fly there and you're in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad The Allah's way is so filled with mercy, no, no mysteries, there's no looking for any cups. Allah makes every truth to be evident and go there and sit in the presence of Prophet As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa This uh, is a TikTok question, um, I feel like to be able to, to be part of this tariqah but does that mean I have to cut everyone off? Cut everyone off? Why, 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 where did we say cut anyone off? We just have to isolate ourselves and meditate and contemplate and a seed can never grow into a tree if it's continuously above ground. So in our life's training we train on how to isolate and retreat and have time to myself to meditate, to contemplate so that I'm tired of being a seed. And only when the seed enters into the soil can it truly be what it's meant to be, you know, to grow into a tree and one day bear fruits for, for people. Otherwise the seed has no benefit to people. And most people they'll live their life like a seed where they don't ever retreat within themselves, understand the reality within themselves. But as far as isolating occasionally, not cutting off relationships but to retreat within oneself to, to build oneself and to whoever knows himself will know his Lord. If we're too busy knowing other people but we don't know ourselves, and busy talking about other people when we don't talk about ourselves. Judging other people and we don't judge ourselves. that's the danger of, of the companying too many people. When you begin to sit by yourself there's nobody to talk bad about except yourself. That why'd you do it like that? Why are you like this? Why, why can't you have better character? Why can't you be nicer? Why can't you be softer? And that's what Allah wants for us, as soon as you sit by yourself begin to make an accounting of yourself. But shaitan wants us to be so distracted by other people and other discussions and, and other issues that have no importance about ourself and our grave. In the end everybody's only responsible for their own grave. You can't bring a friend in, you can't bring any other proof in, it's just you go into the grave and it's you and your actions and Allah's judgment. We pray that Allah's dressing and blessings be upon us. And that Allah's rahmah and mercy and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad be upon us in these holy nights. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon wa salaam ala mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh.